do be bo do bo be bo boom. We're going to have something pretty unusual. Even for us, in a moment, a fellow named Paul Killiam is going to come out and surprise you. I have never seen what he does done before. I don't know whether you have, but if you have, it's uh, a little unusual. Are we about through, gentlemen, with the one-minute uh, thing? Fine. Uh, for those of you who are just jumping back on the network train, uh, I'll say now that uh, for something a bit different, we're going to try to answer a lot of questions we have received from time to time about the inner workings of television and movies. And with that purpose in mind, we've invited a young producer, a young fellow named uh, Paul Killiam, to tell us a few of these backstage secrets. Paul is uh, currently appearing here. He's an entertainer, too. He's appearing in person at number one Fifth Avenue in town. He's also recently completed an engagement at the Blue Angel, uh, I believe it is. Uh, some of you, as a matter of fact, may have seen Paul on TV stations around the country because he does have a, a filmed show which is released here and there. So let's welcome him. Here is Paul Killiam. Good evening, everyone. One of our big problems in uh, the industry today, in the TV industry, is feature films. That is, as you all know, uh, we're having trouble getting enough product. Television can only use old movies, as everyone knows. And uh, some friends of mine and I have worked out a technique. We were afraid we were going to run plumb out of films for TV, but we worked out a technique to make new old movies for television. Uh, perhaps you've heard of our company, uh, Squawman Pictures Corporation. And uh, we're very busy these days. As a matter of fact, uh, just to give you an idea how fast we've grown, why, when we started out, just to open the doors of our studio, we had to borrow $50. And now, in only, oh, six months, uh, we owe $50,000. You get an idea how busy we are. Uh, one of the big problems, and Steve, I'm sure you realize this, is keeping these pictures authentically old. And uh, we've worked out a new technique. Uh, we've developed a camera lens with built-in dust spots and streaks. <laughs> So that not just some, but all your television movies can have that stale, washed out look that's so important. <laughs> Matter of fact, when we're recording, we take great pains. We have a very highly paid engineer who's over in the corner uh, running a large electric motor. Uh, this gives us that overall hum that everyone likes. And as a matter of fact, uh, when we, when you perhaps noticed in a Squaw Man picture that the actor's lips move just a fraction of a second before you hear the words. This is our own patented process. Uh, we call it out of sync. <laughs> Matter of fact, our company slogan is, if it isn't a Squawman picture, it sinks. <laughs> Gosh, i kind of embarrassed here. I don't like to brag, but uh, we make a pretty rotten picture. <laughs> Give you an idea in a minute. Uh, uh, will you set up that film over there? I brought in a little footage, Steve, if uh, it's all right with you. We'll show it. Uh, it's award season, you know, everyone's been getting awards, and sure enough, at Squaw Man, we got a special award from the National Association of Optometrists <laughs> for our great contribution to American astigmatism. <laughs> you know, usually they give out these uh, little statuettes. Uh, what we got was kind of a statuette, it was a Venus clock, a statue of Venus with a clock in her tummy. I guess this will be a lot more useful than a regular statuette, although, frankly, I can't tell you yet. I've been too embarrassed to wind it. But the, uh... <laughs> Actually, I kid around a little bit about the uh, awards, but we do have an Oscar at Squaw Man. I refer to Oscar Bloveld, our chief timekeeper. <laughs> That's what one of my wife calls one of my little jokes. It's only one wife, but she calls it one of my little jokes. I tell her she's one of them, too. This uh, kind of sometimes leads up this li idle banter to a little family spat occasionally. Well, I always manage afterwards to remember the little sayings that led up to it. This kind of helps to while away the time while I'm in the hospital. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'd like to show you this picture. Uh, this is a picture, Steve, that uh, we got from the critics four stars on this picture. A uh, one star from each critic. And this is a picture... <laughs> Uh, this is a picture that we had the privilege of previewing at an invitation screening at the White House. It's not generally known, but we've never had a more loyal or avid movie fan than President McKinley. <laughs> now, uh, this picture is kind of a sophisticated modern romance. Watch it carefully. 
It's all about a typical young American couple, Jim and Joan. Well, Jim and Joan meet one summer. Uh, they meet at her family's summer place, uh, Grossinger's. And she, that's Joan on the right, and it's kind of upsetting. He was just turned down for loan by the friendly folks at Chase Manhattan, and her family don't approve of Jim, you see. So they send him running. Oh, it's very tragic at the beginning, an ill-starred romance. You see, Joan has to visit Jim secretly, wearing her new off-the-shoulder <laughs> Seal Chapman gown. <laughs> this is made by Chapman for a seal. And it's, uh, <laughs> you can see Jim is feeling kind of spry today. He's all pepped up. He just finished an energy-packed bowl of Cheerios. He's, <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. Matter of fact, he's feeling hers, too, in this scene. Now, in this uh, <laughs> picture... Oh, now you meet uh, Joan's well-meaning father, who is in reality the original man from Schweppes. And he, <laughs> he, he tries to talk Joan out of this foolish flirtation, but she kind of defies her old man. In fact, uh, she's quite carried away. And um, uh, Jim comes after them, and father drops a hint that Jim is not welcome. In fact, he drops Jim. <laughs> who from then on goes downhill, and then... Well, oh, it's terrible. When we next see Jim, he's all alone in his swank bachelor apartment <laughs> watching the Steve Allen show. And uh, <laughs> he, he uh, I'll tell you, he's had a little trouble. His psychoanalyst told him uh, when he's frustrated to go home and bake bagels. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's kind of smart, too. He doesn't use any of these new ready mixes, just 100% transit mix. <laughs> uh, he's a smart businessman. He noticed by enlarging the hole in the bagel, he could double his profits. <laughs> you will notice as the picture goes on that when it comes to business, Jim can always be counted on to use his head. <laughs> he can use his head in anything. Now, uh, next scene, you'll see Jim, oh, you'll love this scene where Jim goes to Joan's father with the bagel, reasons with him gently. <laughs> and this time, father is quick to see the light. And uh, Jim realizes at last that his four years at Yale are not a total waste. <laughs> Joan is all admiration, and finally we see the lovers reunited in front of the honeymoon cottage at Levittown. <laughs> you know, according to tradition, he would carry her over the threshold, but this is one of those ultra-modern houses, so they enter through the big picture window, <laughs> and uh, he looks at her and he says, Darling, I know it's not much, but what can you do on a GI loan? And she says, Oh, darling, it's just what I've always wanted. Wall-to-wall -wall rocks. <laughs> well, I give you an idea. Gosh, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. I'd like very much to uh, show you more of the picture. But unfortunately, this is only the coming attraction. Uh, we build the coming attractions first, and if they look at all promising, uh, we build a picture around them. <laughs> Which doesn't take us very long. Uh, we have kind of a fast production technique. And, well, I'll give you an idea. The other day, we started a picture at 9 o'clock in the morning, and at 3 o'clock that afternoon, a revival of the same picture was closing its run at the Rivoli on Broadway. <laughs> Well, Steve, I, I uh, hope you uh, appreciate the technique and the science that we put into these pictures. It's a great responsibility making them, and today our company stands at the crossroads. And we look to you movie lovers to tell us where to go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> oh, okay. That was funny, wasn't it? I'd like to see a lot more of those. Must be pretty hard to get hand, lay hands on some of that film these days, huh? <laughs> it looked like it was made uh, on the spot. It's like a newsreel to me. Uh, where is it here? Oh, yes. Here's a song which is certainly one of the biggest hits of the last couple of years. And Steve's going to sing it for you in just a moment or two.